Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to a follow-up tutorial of one of my previous tutorials that I made on how to make a multi-phase boss. Now, the other day somebody asked me, how do you reset the phases whenever, well, whenever you kill a player? Or whenever a player dies fighting the boss? And I didn't realize that I did not cover that, so thank you so much for that question. I'm going to go ahead and cover that in this tutorial. So, let me go ahead and try to pick up back where we left off. Do know some things will be a little different as I kind of accidentally deleted the file. So, I can't exactly remember everything that I went over. However, I am going to do my best to make sure it coincides nicely. So, the one thing you're going to want to look at... You're going to want to open up your mod file first. Here we have where we left off with our boss. One thing I forgot to mention, when you use stances like this, uh, this here, you're always going to want to have a default stance whenever he spawns. Of course you can call it whatever you want, but I think defaults is the best way to put it. Um, this will make it to where a, he just always is always on this stance, just in case something goes wrong and, you know, uh, the stance is required and you forgot to set it, just go ahead and always throw this skill line in there. Next, we are going to, we're going to talk about actually resetting it. So, what I want to do is, I went ahead and added a skill line here. Skill, S equals phase, reset, add self, on kill player. This means whenever your boss or whatever mob kills a player, this skill will activate. So let's go ahead and jump into what that skill is. Basically what we have going on here is, um... As you can see, he's setting his stance back to whatever you wanted to call the first one. Since I have it set up in such a way where he starts at default and then goes into phase 1 at 75% health, I want to go ahead and set this stance to uh, default, just in case I have any skills set that way. Um, another thing here, uh, this can also vary depending on uh, how many players are fighting your boss. So. If you only have one player fighting your boss, you can keep this distance relatively low, like maybe like five. Um, yeah, okay, so I got it kind of reversed here, but I'm gonna go ahead and actually do a thing, distance equals 50. This is going to vary depending on the size of your arena. As you can see here, I have actually a pretty big one, so 50 might even be a bit small, but I'm not gonna go ahead and test that. But let me go ahead and break that down. So. Players within D equals 50. False. That means if there is a single player within a distance of 50, this skill will not activate. In order for this to work, there has to be absolutely no players alive within a certain ring. So, you can set the distance to whatever you prefer. However, I think it's best to leave it um, whatever the size of your arena is. Or if it's in like a free world, you know, you can roam around wherever, you're not defined by anything when fighting the boss. Uh, make sure to keep it a fairly high number if you only want, um, or if it's team fight based. Now, if you're only gonna have one player fighting it, you don't even need this condition at all. Like, you can just get rid of it entirely. However, if it is a team fight based thing, or you want players to be able to go back to it, you're gonna want to have this condition line set. Now again, let's go ahead and recover this. Here, whenever the skill activates, he set his stance back to default, which, as you can see right here, is the one that he started off with when he spawned. So, that's how you basically do that. That's going to set him back to phase 1. Now, there's a couple more things I want to cover in this tutorial. Next, same with the mob score. So, if you remember, last time we had it to where his mob score was constantly going up. Uh, yeah, here it is. His mob score was constantly going up every 10 seconds. That's not, oh, it was right here, I have it disabled, sorry. So it was going up every one, uh, every second. So, since that's what we have up here, you know, if you remember, less than 10, 10 to 19, over 19, um, you're gonna wanna go ahead and set it to zero. So we called it boss life. So we're gonna go down here, modify mob score, objective equals boss life. Action equals set, make sure it's set to set not add or subtract, and value equals zero at self. Now, if you want your boss to heal, you can do uh, heal percent m equals one. This means a multiplier of 100%, meaning it'll heal back up to full health. 
Uh, if you don't want your mob or your boss to heal whenever a player dies and no other players are around, just go ahead and get you know you just go ahead and get rid of that. But I think if you want players to come back into the fight and start all over again if they're all dead, you're gonna want to have this line. As you can see here, I added a little thing saying if using mob score instead of a stance. You can use both, but I highly, highly discourage it. So I am going to go ahead and disable the scores. So that way that doesn't mess with anything. And yep, got it there. So that's also going to disable this. Make sure you don't have your message going off at the same time as uh, your score. Now the last thing I want to talk about is what if it kills all players but its score is still going up when nobody's there? Well, first thing you're going to want to do, one, add the despawn option to your boss and go ahead and set it to false. This is going to be a huge deal because if no players are around and he kills the last player, it doesn't matter. This skill won't activate because by default Minecraft mechanics, it will despawn. So you want to go ahead and set despawn to false. Next, we want to make a skill out of this so that way it's not constantly going off without players around. So what we're going to do... We're going to type in a new thing here, skill, s equals, uh, we'll go ahead and call it boss life, just because we're keeping it consistent with everything else. So what we're going to do is, at self on timer of 20, 20 not 230, okay. So what we're going to do here, boss life, we're going to play around with the uh, conditions again. So conditions, we're going to take this and we're going to copy it, paste it, and we're going to switch false to true. That means so long as a player is in with uh, is within this radius, the skill will activate. So we're going to do skills here. And we're simply just going to take our two mechanics, which was the modify mob score, and our action message. We're going to take both of those and we're just going to go ahead and throw it into the skill file. So let me go ahead and lower this so that way I can show you guys what it'll be like. But uh, yeah, once you have those down, remove these uh, triggers at the end here, the on timers, and go ahead and save. Once you do that, you're going to want to go ahead and delete these from your mob file, avoiding clutter and making sure it doesn't uh, duplicate. So with all of this done, sorry I, I realize this is a bit you know, lengthy and whatnot, but it's very important in order to fix your boss. We're gonna go ahead and reload now, and we're gonna go ahead and spawn him in, boss. So as you can see, he's giving me that message, and if I back out from 10, the message fades away and I'm no longer getting it anymore. That's because we defined in our skill file to only activate if players are within a distance of 10, which means he's also not giving himself a score anymore either since I'm not there. But if I come back in, you'll see it picked up from 5 and went straight to 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is very, 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 very essential if you are having a, uh, a one-person team fight, or one-person, sorry, one-person boss fight. So, the last thing I absolutely want to uh, stress over again is make sure to have despawn set to false, because if I have this set to true, which is the default state, I'll go ahead and show you what happens here. Here you can see 14, 15, 16, I'm gonna let him kill me here. Uh, he does a lot of damage. So assuming he just killed me, as you can see we were at 23 right there. Okay, now home, hub, uh, well where'd he go? Players can't fight him anymore because he's gone now he despawned because no other players were nearby. So that's why it's very important to have despawn set to false with this as well. So let's go ahead and spawn him back in. And I'm going to show you the importance of the uh, players within radius thing. So pay attention to this number down here. Okay, so we went ahead and hit respawn at 11, which officially took our character out of rendering. Uh, we're far, far, far away from the boss, and if I go back to the hub, if you remember, it stopped at 11. So when I get back to him, 
you can see that it's resumed at 11 and started going up from there. I hope this answered any questions you guys may have had about my last tutorial. I realize it's a pretty complicated one and you know, I didn't exactly go over a way to fix it if something like this were to happen. So if this helped you out, guys, please uh, make sure to like and subscribe. Make sure to stay tuned for more Mythic tutorials, and I can't wait to see what you come up with in the future.